it's the gear tester here and in this video I am going to be manufacturing some scotch-eyed augers. Scotch-eyed augers are really nothing more complicated than an auger bit. This happens to be an older Irwin auger bit and uh, it's set up to be used by some kind of tool system. Scotch-eyed auger is basically this same exact bit but with a metal ring on it here at the back of the bit which then you can put a stick okay or a shaft of wood through and then you can turn it and it turns what is a, a tool that requires either a crank handle or some kind of electrical tool turns it into a completely hand used tool that's very easy to backpack or hike with or simply throw in a bag and then manufacture different items in a bushcrafting or survival situation okay and so I got online and I, I looked uh, for scotch eyed augers and you can definitely find them out there uh, they've actually become more available over the last couple years because demand, I think, has gone up for them. Uh, but they're still relatively expensive. And so I had I, I purchased this auger bit at a uh, flea market or, or a garage sale. I purchased it for about $2. This one I already had uh, in a toolbox. And I thought today I'd come out here to the shop and I would do some welding. And I would weld. I'm going to use some uh, pieces from this uh, scrap piece of pipe here, just mild steel. I'm going to attach it cut it here uh, with an angle grinder then I'm going to weld it on uh, to the ends of these uh, augers and uh, maybe in a later video or maybe attach to this video uh, I'll go out and uh, use them a little bit. I am a little bit worried about the end of this auger. I'm not sure how much life it has left in it. I'm not sure I understand everything about auger bits uh, fully but I think it has quite a bit of life still in it and I think it will cut maybe if I do a little uh, sharpening on it. This one is in a relatively good condition. And so I think once I have the, the eye welded onto the back that it won't be a problem. So I, that's what I'm doing here in this welding project here today. And I hope you'll come along for the ride. Uh, I'm going to do a, a pretty good portion of this video. I'm going to do it in fast forward here. I'm going to start to finish on this project, uh, but it's going to shorten down the length of the video and I think it's going to make it more usable and uh, more beneficial to you rather than having like a 45 minute video of me cutting and doing everything here. I'll just fast forward through that. You can see exactly how I did it. If uh, any problems arise or anything that I think you need to know about, I will slow down and work on that and we'll do that in a regular time and then speed back up until I hit another bump. So when you're moving back and forth from grinding and using the bench grinder and welding, it's easy to forget which helmet you have on. Seems like that would be simple, but it's not. So the way I avoid uh, flashing myself, the way I avoid going and welding <laughs> and having no eye protection in terms of 
the uh, flash from welding is that I come right back here and I just leave my mask here directly with the stinger. And that means that I am forced to deal with this when I come back to grab this and it's just a great way of reminding myself. That's what I've found that I'm doing here to help myself not uh, forget which helmet I have on. It's easy to know that you have this one on and realize that it's dark. That's not a problem. And this one will also protect you from sparks and material coming off as you grind or, or a cut. Uh, but you don't want to be wearing that when you fire up the welder. And so this is the way I'm avoiding that, just making sure my helmet is right here with the stinger and uh, that forces me to deal with it and helps keep my eyesight safe as I'm doing these projects. So here is the finished product, at least for today. You can see here, I, I did a small amount of hand work with files and some sandpaper on these to kind of smooth them out so they wouldn't be jagged and pokey. Um, and I'm not really happy with the way they look. Keep in mind that I am learning to weld, right? And so rather than just welding random pieces of metal together, I decided I would do some projects here that you guys are gonna see me do. So be kind in the comments, understand that I'm uh, learning to weld, I'm teaching myself to weld, I'm reading about welding, I'm watching welding videos on YouTube, and I'm wanting to manufacture some usable things. This is the smaller one. This took a lot more time. Uh, my the, the amount of electricity that I was using to weld uh, was a little too high. Um, and so I had a lot more heat than I needed, and I kind of melted this, this rod down a little bit as I was welding it. Um, and so I kind of had to go back and redo it and add some metal and I'm not really happy with the way this one turned out fully, uh, but the welds I think are strong enough. I whacked them with a hammer here quite a bit. Uh, they are strong enough to hold, and so they'll give me a good, a good uh, opportunity to try out Scotch Eye Augers and see how they work. And if I really like them, I can of course rework them. I can have uh, purchase more, and uh, now I've got this amount of knowledge underneath my belt and how they're going to work or what doesn't work as that may be and uh, so thanks for coming along if you like the idea of the scotch eyed augers i would encourage you to subscribe to my channel i'm going to be uh, producing another video here in the next couple days on using these just practice using these drilling some holes and uh, then maybe in the future making some furniture or doing some other craft style things with these scotch eyed augers in the future so if you're subscribed to my channel or you just check back on a regular basis over the next week or so, you'll see videos of me using the Scotch Eye Augers here as well. Thank you very much for your views and your subscriptions. This is the Gear Tester signing off.